How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at Hess's Law Lab. So our objectives for this lab will be to apply Hess's Law to determine the heat of reaction for the following reaction. So overall, we're looking to get this. Ammonium chloride solid breaking apart and becoming ammonia gas and hydrochloric acid as a gas. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have a few different steps we're going to look at. First, we're going to experimentally determine the value for this reaction, where we have aqueous ammonia reacting with aqueous hydrochloric acid to give us uh, ammonium ion and chloride ion, as well as experimentally determine the value for ammonium chloride solid breaking apart into ammonium aqueous and the chloride ion aqueous, so basically dissolving ammonium chloride. And then we have these two processes with given heat of reactions. So our goal is to figure out the heat of reaction for two of these steps, use the other two steps, combine them by applying Hess's law and getting that overall reaction. So in part one, we're going to react hydrochloric acid with ammonia to give us the ammonium ion and the chloride ion. So our materials that we're going to need will be two molar hydrochloric acid, which you can see right here in the picture. We're also going to need 0.69 molar NH3. You might be asking, why is this an odd molarity? You know, why is it not two molar or one molar like the other one? Well, this is what I got over the counter. So this is just kind of cleaning uh, ammonia. So we got NH3 aqueous with a concentration of 0.69 molar. You need some pipettes so that you can measure out finite volumes precisely some styrofoam cups to act as a calorimeter to insulate our system, some graduated cylinders so that we can measure out given volumes of those two aqueous solutions, and then, uh, yeah, a thermometer. We need a thermometer because we're going to be measuring some therms. We're metering some therms. So the first step is going to measure out the 72.9 milliliters of the 0.69 molar ammonia aqueous. So you want to use a clean and dry graduated cylinder and then pour it from your stock bottle into the graduated cylinder and once you get close to your final volume, your desired volume, then you're going to want to switch over to a pipette so that you can add precisely to the volume that you need. So you can use the pipette, tilt your bottle, take out a little bit from the stock bottle and add it to your graduated cylinder to your final volume. The next step you're going to have to carry out is to pour that ammonia into your calorimeter and record its temperature. So we pour it into the insulated cups, give it a little mix, and then record its temperature. So now that you have your ammonia measured out and temperature recorded, you're going to have to measure out the amount of hydrochloric acid you need. For the two molar hydrochloric acid that we're using, we need to measure out 25 milliliters. So I pour out most of it. Uh, and then I grab my pipette so that I can add more precisely till I reach my final volume of 25 milliliters. We're assuming that since these chemicals were left in the same room overnight that the temperatures are the same. They're both at room temperature. Now I got my two samples ready to be mixed. So I get my calorimeter and I record, I check the temperature again and I'm going to add my hydrochloric acid to the mixture and stir to make sure that all the contents are mixed thoroughly. Now the temperature is going to rise on this one, so I'm going to stir, check the temperature, I'm going to stir some more and check the temperature and repeat that until I get the highest temperature that it reaches. After it starts to cool down, I know I'm done with that part and I can dispose of the chemicals appropriately. So in part two, we're simply dissolving ammonium chloride solid in water so that it breaks up into ammonium ion and chloride ion. So the materials we're going to need is some distilled water. So I have a square bottle of some distilled water. Ammonium chloride solid, which I have in a stock bottle here. A calorimeter, which is just those styrofoam cups from last part, uh, clean and dried. A weigh boat, so I can scoop out my ammonium chloride into something workable. And a balance to measure out the specific mass of the ammonium chloride. And a scoop to scoop it out and then I almost forgot last but not least the graduated cylinder so I can measure out a specific volume of water. So that's all I'm going to need for this part. So the first step in this part will be to measure out 25 milliliters of distilled water into your calorimeter and then you're going to want to record the temperature of that water in degrees Celsius. So 
Measure out 25 milliliters, put in your calorimeter, and record its initial temperature. The next step is going to be to measure out somewhere between 5 and 5.5 grams of ammonium chloride using your balance. So in order to do that, you have to put your weigh boat on top and then zero it. So it's measuring zero grams when the weigh boat's there. Then take your ammonium chloride in your scoop. Try to break up any large clumps of ammonium chloride in your stock bottle. And just kind of carefully scoop it out onto the weigh boat until you have between 5 and 5.5 grams of the ammonium chloride solid. And then record the actual mass that you measured out. Now that you have your two reactants, if you will, your ammonium chloride and your water, now you can mix them together in the calorimeter. So again, check your initial temperature and then get, take your ammonium chloride and mix it in using the thermometer to stir it until all of it dissolves. You may have some large clumps that you need to break up and you can use a thermometer to do that, paying attention to the temperature as it proceeds. You'll see for this reaction, the temperature drops. So you're going to stir with the thermometer until all of it dissolves and you reach the lowest temperature of the process. Once you've done that, record your final temperature. And that's, uh, that's that part. There you go. Now for the analysis, our desired reaction is this ammonium chloride solid breaking apart to become ammonia gas and hydrochloric acid gas. So the steps that we can get there with applying Hess's law will be the one from part one where we react ammonia with hydrochloric acid and we can use the data that we collected to determine the joules per mole for that reaction. Part two as well, the ammonium chloride that we dissolved in water to give us ammonium ion and chloride ion, we can use that data to determine joules per mole for that process as well. And then they give us two other steps with given joules per mole. So we're going to use these four steps to give us our desired reaction overall and apply Hess's law to determine the joules per mole for that desired reaction. So that's what we're looking for, that delta H for that reaction. A hint, we need to get joules per mole for the first two parts. Now for part one, little q equals mc delta t will be helpful, as well as knowing that molarity is equal to moles per liter. Now for part two, your hint is again Q equals MC delta T and then gram formula mass and that's all I'm giving you. Alright, so yeah, quit your blabbing and get the labbing.